Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This is an update on making the uh, QCX Mini Kit from QRP Labs. Uh, they've now got three versions of this, the standard old one, which I don't think they're making anymore. The problem I had with that was that the design was not case friendly. Uh, the controls were at different heights on the circuit board and so on. Uh, this one is the mini version designed to go into a case. And there is a, well, I guess you'd call it a maxi version. He calls it the plus version, which is a bigger board which makes it easier for uh, first time or early time uh, kit builders to put that together. This one is definitely not a beginner's kit because everything is really crammed on there. Uh, I have been very, very careful not to, uh, you know, bridge between solder traces and things like that. So what have I done since last time? Well, I have uh, put in a number of things, including uh, the headers here for uh, programming and I've wound the toroids. I had an interesting time with one of those. The middle one is supposed to be wound with 17 turns and each of these with 16 turns. This is the 20 meter edition. And I took the 17 turn one and installed it here by accident. So I unsoldered one lead unwrapped a turn, soldered it back in, and that made it a 16 turn. And I thought, uh, well, you know, I wonder if I'm going to have enough wire to do the rest, but it worked just fine. You may be able to see here that the uh, uh, windings are kind of tightly done, um, and that's actually suggested in the kit instruction so that it's easier to unwind than to take something that's unwound and wind it up tight again. So we'll see how that works. That's part of the adjusting on the thing. The other thing I did was put the transistors in. There's a driver and um, three finals, and they are under this screw right here. It's a little hard to, to see directly, but one of the interesting things about that screw is that it holds all four transistors flat against a metallic surface on the circuit board so that the whole circuit board can act as a uh, heat sink for them. Now I went one step further than uh, he had done. Uh, I just assembled uh, the computer that I've got here uh, in the middle of last year and this is the uh, heat sink gel uh, or goop whatever you call it that allows for the heat transfer from the uh, microprocessor down to the fan for cooling in the computer and I thought well I think I'll put a little bit in here just to enhance the heat transfer um, to the board. Now um, one of the other things is these components have to be uh, right up against the board like this capacitor uh, this capacitor over here. Now there's a trick for doing sockets like this IC socket right here, where you solder one lead, and then while holding it flat against the board, you reheat that lead, and then that allows the socket to come completely flat against the board. Well, that same thing works for these other components. You can solder one lead, and then while heating the solder on the other side, you can feel it go down flat against the board and get just what you want there. I have uh, very little left to do to complete this board. Uh, I've got to put in the, um, the uh, uh, sockets for uh, the connectors and you know where you plug in the key, where you plug in the headphones and stuff like that. Uh, those have to be soldered. I've got two more to do up here and these haven't been soldered yet. I had to squeeze them in there. Man, these components really are mushed up against another. Uh, these blue things right here are potentiometers. There's three of them. And it's, yeah, there you go. Get a little bit of focus on it. Uh, these are used for alignment. And um, they're too tall, so you have to chip off the bottom 
uh, there's a little ledge on either side that holds it away from the board and you have to chip that off. And I found that using an emery cloth worked well. Uh, emery file, emery file. I asked my wife for an emery file and she gave me one. Uh, also there's a little tiny circuit board in here, you can't even see it. Uh, it is for the uh, temperature controlled crystal oscillator that uh, is rather entertaining to install. Um, I will tell you that if you follow the instructions exactly, <laughs> I even followed along with my finger in there, it goes on just fine without a problem. One thing I am worried about is the bottom of this board these uh, leads stick up just a little tiny bit and uh, he has suggested trimming some that uh, might interfere with the way this mounts in the case. So we'll have to cross that bridge uh, when we come to it. So this thing is coming along and thought you'd like to see uh, what I've done with it so far. Maybe a tip or two might be helpful as you assemble yours or assemble a kit that you're assembling. By the way, when I put these transistors in right here, they have to lay over on, the, on this uh, uh, spot on the board for cooling. Uh, I found it easier to kind of hold the transistor and solder it on the component side rather than on the solder side. And then I went and soldered them on the solder side. It seemed to work really well. So this board is almost done. Then we get the board that has the display on it and the volume control and the rotary encoder and the push buttons for programming and all that sort of stuff. So moving along with these uh, coils right here, I tried very hard to follow the instructions exactly, but I suspect there will be some give and take on that. I want to show you something. This right here is a rather cool tool that I splurged on two or three years ago. This is made by HAKKO, H-A-K-K-O. It's a PR300. It's made in Japan. Okay, this tip gets very hot and it's got a hole in it, which you probably can't see on the video. But when you pull the trigger, there's a vacuum pump in here. So this will heat the solder. You have to push this on carefully because it can really make a mess if you don't. Put it on carefully, then pull the trigger and it sucks all the solder that's on the joint up into here. Uh, it'll eventually fill up, but uh, then you have to change the filter in there. But uh, right now, like when uh, I put the wrong coil in here, um, I had to undo a turn, and it was real easy to just put this up against here and suck the solder away. And it sucks enough solder, if you do it right, that the hole is clean, and you can reuse the hole. Uh, one of the problems I've had trying other methods of desoldering components is that they leave a film of solder over the hole. And so trying to reuse that hole can become a real problem. If you are trying to use solder braid, I would suggest putting a little bit of flux on it. Use rosin core flux. You can get this flux. This is Radio Shack flux right here. But you can get this at Home Depot. If you go down to where they sell flux, usually in the copper pipe section, plumbing and stuff like that, they'll have the regular flux that you use for soldering, um, you know, with a blowtorch, soldering uh, plumbing, uh, which is getting to be obsolete now with the new plastic uh, uh, water stuff. Anyway, make sure you get the, the, uh, the flux that's designed for electronic components. It's got a rosin, uh, flux on it. By the way, one little thing like this of uh, flux, and by the way, this stuff stinks to high heaven. Um, this will last you a lifetime, um, unless you're soldering every day, all day. Uh, and a little bit of that can be put on that soldering braid, and that soldering braid suddenly becomes very effective at wicking up solder. 
If you just try the old braid and your flux is dried up or something like that, it won't work very well. But if you put just a little bit of flux on it, it works great. And like I said, a little tiny bottle like this is a lifetime supply. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, please click like and uh, please share. Tell others about the channel. And don't forget to send your questions to hamradioanswers at gmail.com or you can go to ke0og.net, that's .net slash ask hyphen Dave, and there's a form there you can fill out. And uh, some people have successfully attached pictures to that form, so I guess it can be done. It's a new form uh, software that I've got on the website. The old form software was rejecting too many, um, too many questions. They weren't, weren't uh, working. So anyway, there you go. Uh, also, please check out decastler.com slash support for ways you can fund this channel. And until we next meet, 73.